continue to celebrate this season of creation and God's goodness as we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous and blessed, they will share the bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from James. 
my brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with youthful thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has God not chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blasphemy the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as trans transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. From there Jesus set out and went to wade to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. 
But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately and heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned to the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Christ. Sometimes find it, although it's a challenge, those gospel readings that are rather puzzling. And there's really two things that seem to happen in the gospel that are a little bizarre this morning. I think, first of all, it's important for us to understand the context. Jesus is preparing himself, and especially his disciples, to go up to Jerusalem, where he's going to give his life in sacrifice. And so, understandably, he wants some time with them kind of on his own, to prepare them. But wherever he goes, his reputation precedes him. People are talking about him. There's a great buzz in the air. This man who is going to heal those we love. And so Jesus, at the beginning of the passage, has gone off to a place where not many Jewish people live. It's a region northwest of Galilee, so that he can maybe get a bit of quiet but also that time alone with the disciples. But as it turns out, the crowd finds him. And he encounters two people in the gospel. The first, I think, is disturbing because of the dialogue between Jesus and this Gentile woman. She approaches him. She says her daughter is plagued 
with an evil spirit. And I imagine like any mother, she goes to Jesus and begs that her daughter be delivered. But Jesus says to her, and it seems very dismissive, what is it, why would we throw crumbs to the dogs? And it seems very offensive to us. But those who understand the original dialogue suggest that rather it was almost playful banter. And here's the context. Jesus is coming to be the Messiah for the Jewish people. And once they grasp the kingdom, then others will follow, like the non-Jews, the Gentiles. But his primary mission is first and foremost to the Jewish people. And so what he is saying to her basically is, I have a mission. And my mission is first of all to feed, to nourish, to heal my own people. But she is remarkable. And I think like any mother desperately loving her child, she says, but even the crumbs that could be offered that fall from the table, the dogs could eat up. She's not demeaning herself. She's actually remarkably wise. Because she says, even the scraps that you are offering, I will take for the sake of my daughter. So it's not meant to be somewhere where Jesus dismisses this woman. Because above all, Jesus had profound respect for all women and their vocation and their role. But it's a dialogue. It's meant in the original language to be almost playful. Jesus challenging this woman. And notice what happens. Jesus says to her, because you recognize this, your daughter has been made well. And she goes home and finds her daughter delivered. So it's a happy ending, but a rather puzzling dialogue, as it were. And then we have the second healing. And again, if we remember the larger context, Jesus is trying to lay low. Good luck. Because they find him, and they bring to him someone who has an impediment in his speech and is deaf. And notice what the detail is. Jesus takes him away from the crowd. He's not looking and drawing attention to himself. And he physically responds to this person. He touches him with his fingers and uses spittle to heal him. But it's done on the side. And the hope is that Jesus can heal this man, but keep it on the quiet. But once again, the buzz starts. And they begin talking and talking about him. And all Jesus really wants is that time away for himself and the disciples, but his fame is spreading. And I think what it suggests to you and me is what is in the heart of God. That Jesus knew his mission was first to the Jewish people and then to all, but he was willing to circumvent that because people were in need. And I wonder sometimes for us, I know myself, we get very focused. Sometimes you have a goal in mind, you put your head down and you head in that direction and have everybody get out of the way. But the reminder is that God often puts people in our life who need us to stop and to listen and to respond. Both the first reading and the second reading this morning are beautiful reminders of how we treat one another. Are we drawn to appearances on those who seem to have it all, the so-called beautiful people in our world? Or do we have a heart for the poor and the broken and the hurting? And so maybe today we take our cue as we always do from Jesus, who had a mission as we do, to build up the kingdom of God, but to be mindfully aware that sometimes in our goal to be task-oriented, we too need to stop and see those around us, to notice the needs, and above all, to respond.
189 as we profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a position of prayer. The prayers of the people are found on page 112. We'll do number three. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. Amen. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for all bishops, rostered ministers, and people in the communion. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Primate Linda, our Metropolitan Anne, Todd and Susan, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the work of truth. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Charles, our King, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who live in Wellington North, Minto and area, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, remembering those in need, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest of times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers, God of power, and through the ministry of your Son, free us from the grip of the tomb, that we may desire you as the fullness of life and proclaim your saving deeds to all the world. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you always.